Thank you very much for clicking this video. I am humbled to be joined by you today. You are such a wonderful soul. And if you are wondering, we are all about spreading love, peace, and forgiveness to the world. Right out of Africa with good, good vibes and lots of love. Watch till the end and leave your comments. Let's dive in. All right, let's have a look. Oh, that's a trash river. There's no water, it's only trash. This is insane. They are actually making all the shirts and the clothes here. That's why there's so much trash. It's very interesting. On the other side, there's not much trash here. Look at this. It's a little cleaner, but so much dirt is coming from uh, all these buildings. So, it's not surprising that probably you already know Bangladesh is very famous for clothing. So, probably the shirt you are wearing right now is from Bangladesh. Just check it on the back of your shirt. You will see where it comes from. Even uh, all the big brands sourcing their materials from here. What? That's a bad situation. Please create the environment. It's really just like waking up from a dream. Because physical reality is a dream. You do understand that you're in spirit right now, yes? None of you leave spirit. That's your natural state. You are just dreaming that you've left. Ha! Oh my god. I was today years old when I found out. Witching hour. So, the way that the occult works is the first three hours of the new day is when they get started. That's from midnight to 3 a.m. And what they do is equivalent to a church service. Uh, if you think of a church service, we, we sing and worship the Lord and, and you know, he's enthroned in our praises and we preach and pray and everything. And then, and then we, we hope that out of what we have done, the kingdom of God is extended in the earth. That's the, the whole goal, right? So witches do the same thing. And they meet together and they enthrone demons, some by their words and incantations, but mainly by paying them in blood. Life is in the blood. So blood, innocent blood, is money in the spirit realm you pay for things to be done in blood. And there's a whole economy of blood. So the very highest blood is an innocent male child. And then it goes to an innocent female child. And then it goes to children in general. And, and, and there's a certain amount for a priest or a pastor. And on and on it goes down to just, a, you know, a, any a living human. And if you can't get that, then you degrade to, um, you know, oxen or a, a horse or a llama. And it goes all the way down to actually to birds and, and even down to insects. And uh, for things that are lesser than that, there's cursed corn and they do all kinds of stuff. So anyway, that's the economy of evil. So covens meet and from midnight to 2 a.m. they conjure and they they do blood sacrifices and they do all kinds of things to make demons happy and to barter with them for a favor of some sort so they it, you know it, it's like uh the barter system like you know how much for this no no you need some more blah 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 anyway they barter with them and then they they send them to do their bidding at 2 a.m that's why all horror movies that you'll ever see you'll see the clock strike two because from two to three that's the witching hour from midnight to two they have done their conjuring they paid demons in blood. They've done their deal with the devil. And at two o'clock, the devils are sent out to do their bidding and, and basically to deliver on the, the promises that were paid for in blood. So every night at 2 a.m., bam, it was on. And so we just we just set our alarm clocks for quarters of two, you know. Oh, I didn't know that too. Do you think so, Brad? Right there? All right, child. 
So we are officially eating rocks. This is a popular street food in China and uh, they're not, nobody's eating the rocks. You're not supposed to. Actually, the dish translates to suck and throw away. So what they're, what they're doing is they're seasoning pebbles and giving that to people uh, so that they can suck on the rocks and take them home. To reseason, I mean, there's a, there's a big focus in this on being able to reuse them. So apparently, I guess, you take them home, put some garlic and some chili on them, and then you, you, you suck them later. I guess that's leftovers. My thought is why. This was invented centuries ago by fishermen who didn't have enough food. So my question is, are we running out? Are we running out of food? Are we at the point where we gotta give this food a remix, sucking rocks? Now I don't wanna, you know, I don't wanna poop on another culture because you can say the same about the history of black Americans and chitlins and stuff. But I don't eat that either. So, checkmate? <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> I don't know what to say, but I don't know about sucking rocks because they did that back then because they didn't have enough food. I got Postmates. So, this is just one of those touristy things that for some reason some people will pay for the experience. But my thought is, how used are the rocks that I'm getting originally? Were these, did a man hike up to a volcano and collect these and these are fresh rocks? Or were these sucked on by people who were dining inside? You know, the people who didn't take it to go? Were these just thrown into the the, the, the sink with the other dishes and you just use soap, you know, you season the, the rocks with soap right after garlic and then clean them off and then re-season. Are you one of the people that says, oh, heat kills all the germs, so don't worry about the last guy who was gargling your pebbles. Pause. Seasoned rocks. That's new. That's new. Very Goron-esque. Very Goron-ish. But okay. No! Why would people want to do that? Oh no, that's very surprising. You know, my high school headmaster used to tell me that patients can cook stores. No, I don't know why people are do you cooking stores. The monoliths back from 2020. There was the one that was found in Utah, and then one appeared in Romania, and then one showed up in California, a fourth one showed up in Las Vegas. And then after the Las Vegas one was the one in Great Britain. Those ones were the ones that got the most publicity, but there was another one found in New Mexico and in Canada, but there are even more than just these ones. And I know there was a YouTube group who said that they were the ones that built the monoliths and put them there. And then another group of artists came forward and said they were the ones who put the monoliths there. And it just seemed like everybody wanted to be responsible for the monoliths. And out of nowhere, the monoliths just vanished. It seems like there's hella people that stepped forward and said it was them and claimed responsibility and multiple people had proof that they were the ones building them. I thought it was super weird when I was Googling it and trying to find any information and it said 2016, like it was 2020 and then created in 2016. Any other information I tried to search for, it said that there was no answers. Like something went wrong, something went wrong, something went wrong. So I'm like, what went wrong? <laughs> Am I missing something, or is there something weird going on? Huh. What was going on? A little moss gnome right there. Old cellar door Good has job. never been opened yeah. before until today. It was oh hidden God. behind oh, a secret a room for 120 <laughs> years. Oh, Huh. Was that real or was that some fake stuff, man? It is unknown how much more forest fires there would be in the world if not for birds. Corporate scientist Dr. Swift here, and there is a lot that I want to unpack about this video, so let's get into it. First, for the folks who are only going to stay for 30 seconds, is this an example of how crows or other birds routinely put out wildfire? I very much doubt it, but you're going to have to watch the rest of the video to find out why not and what I think they're doing instead. If you're still with me, let's talk about what kind of crows these actually are. These are collared crows, a species native to China, and honestly one that I do not see pop up on my social media feed very often, which is important to identify because it not only gives us some clues into the potential or 
origin of this video, but it also gives me some research context for looking up any potential relationship that exists between this particular species and fire. Here's the deal. If birds were routinely putting out wildfires, we would know about it. Not necessarily mean scientists, but I at the very least mean human beings. Somebody would have noticed this, it would have been a big deal, and it would have very much taken up space in the storytelling tradition and natural history observations of the people in the area where that was happening. For example, it's thanks to the Aboriginal community that scientists now more widely understand that there are some birds that actually do the exact opposite of put out fires, they spread them. Yep, that's right, there are three species of these so-called firehawks, that includes whistling kites, black kites and brown falcons that will pick up burning sticks to spread the fire and flush out prey. So if these birds aren't putting this fire out out of some sense of like danger or altruism, what are they doing? For that, we have to break this video down in a little bit more detail, starting with this frame. It's here that you can see that when the bird opens its bill, it's got a pink mouth interior. And that's really key because it tells us that this is a very young bird. It means we now need to be highly suspicious of any of the behaviors being illustrated by the birds in this video because we have no idea if these have birds have been hand raised from day one or just recently came into the care of this person that they're very clearly quite familiar with. And that matters because that kind of interaction can totally change their behavior, so we can't take this as any kind of representation of what they would normally do in the wild. But let's for fun just put that aside for now and ask, is there a way that we could biologically explain this behavior besides these birds just being like Smokey the Bear? And in fact, I think that there is, and you see it right here in this frame. Because while this bird may just be spreading its wings out to help balance as it's kind of doing this awkward thing, this is very, very similar to the typical kinds of hygiene postures that these birds adopt when they're doing things like anting, sunning, and other forms of feather care, which we know for a whole variety of corvids includes smoke bathing. Because as we know, smoke is very toxic, which means that in small doses, it can actually be pretty useful for warding off feather parasites. So there you have it. Thank you for watching. And remember that if you want more content like this in your feed, you just gotta hit that follow button. Huh, you see these animals are very intelligent. I'm losing my mind over this right now. You know amber, it's fossilized tree resin. It can have little tiny bugs trapped inside or plant material. Yeah, this one's got liquid blood in it. I'm not even kidding. Liquid blood, like what's in your veins right now. That blood was pumping through the arteries of a living thing millions of years ago. You want Jurassic Park? That's how you get Jurassic Park. One million likes, we'll drill a hole in it and I will suck the blood out. I'm gonna show you how to make a candle out here in the woods with all natural materials. Deer fat. I'm gonna render this down and make tallow, which is great for candle making and all kinds of other things. All I'm doing here is chopping it up into small pieces, then I'll put it in my pot. Pretty simple process, you just wanna heat it up on your fire. And you want your fire on a low setting. I'll keep stirring it around so nothing burns. I found half of a hickory nut husk, and this is where the tallow's gonna go. The fat is rendering down nicely into a liquid, and that's what we want. Then I'll Pour it into the husk. I'm using a section of jute twine as my wick. You just want to saturate the whole thing and then set it in there. I'll wait a few minutes for it to cool down and harden. So now I have my candle and it's ready to light. You can make a bunch of these things and keep them in your pack for when you need them. Pretty cool little candle. You can also make one by just dipping your twine into the tallow over and over again. This can be used as a fire starter rope as well. The tallow can also be used for cooking, soap making, conditioning and waterproofing leather, and treating tools. So that's a very interesting hug, huh? Who shot the footage? He's walking out on the moon. One giant leap for mankind. He had a TV Where? camera. Where? It was in the as he walked down as he walked down the lamb, uh, he pulled a handle that deployed what was called a mesa, the modular equipment assembly, modular equipment storage assembly, storage area, whatever it was, and in that was a camera. And so when that came down, they flipped it on, and the camera was pointed right at the at the landing. And so as he came down the ladder. This camera was taking his picture. It's a TV camera. It's grainy, but it was it was in that assembly. Right. And then once we got off, uh, they they took the camera and put it on a, um, a little tripod, if I remember. But Last thing, I remember very clearly. I think anybody who was alive at the time does. I remember my parents waking me up, and we went down and we watched 
you guys land on the moon. No, which you didn't. Was, no, you didn't. What? Because uh, uh, there wasn't any television. There wasn't anybody taking a picture. You watched animation. See, you associated what you saw with... I have very hazy memories. Yeah, I know. Uh, well, well, no, what we saw was we all, we all were gathered around you the heard, old curve you top heard radio me and listened. talking about, uh, you know, how many feet we were going to the left and right, and then I said, contact light, engine stop. It was and exciting. A few other things, and then Neil said, Houston, Tranquility Base, the Eagle has landed. This was Man, how about that? That, that was that, very exciting. Not a bad line. Wow. Yeah, yeah. Uh -huh. this was, so were you self-conscious about all the, I mean, the entire... <laughs> What do you think? This, <laughs> this clear is glass tubes with light shining from the top and bottom onto tall blonde haired, tall black haired, tall red haired, tall brown haired, and some shorter human bodies, seemingly all in suspended animation in these preservation tubes. One female abductee was told she would undergo, quote, translation into the light, close quote. One short, five-foot-tall human female abductee named Juana Lawson from New Jersey had experienced transference into a tall, thin, female, white-skinned, black-haired humanoid body preserved in a clear glass tube. I asked her, what did the tall ETs want to accomplish? Juana answered, quote, they wanted to take a sub-creature and evolve it to the level that they are on and prove it could be done. But why? To prove that what is not pure and good could be made pure and good. So is the soul the major challenge? Are tall beings inserting the experimental preserved bodies with souls? Juana answered, quote, no, with their genes, taking from themselves and putting their genes into the fetuses of the human entity. Each time you do that, you get a higher evolution to teach love, unity, oneness with this conscious universe. Close quote. I would believe this, and I do believe that they are doing experiments, and I do believe that they're altering DNA and things like that, but to increase the love and things, I see the total opposite happening to our planet. And if you can't see it, you're blind. It's the total opposite. Look around you. Turn your te television on. Well, now we just click your TV on and watch what's going on. Watch what's going on. I don't see love and unity whatsoever. It's absolutely disappeared. And, you know, it makes me wonder because you see different types of alien species all throughout the internet and you see this so-called footage and these so-called testimonies and this declassified information and things like that and people were trying to tell you that you know the uh everybody's got to change their frequency and 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 you know love and light and but i'm seeing bitterness and hate this is what i'm seeing i mean i'm not speaking for everyone but for the majority of the planet look at what's going on I've never in my entire life witnessed as much racial hate as I see now, and it's fueled by the mainstream media. This is what makes it very scary, is that people are, you can talk about them being genetically altered by certain, um, the tall whites is who she's talking about, the Pleiadians, and you can talk about this all you want, but if they're being so genetically engineered to show love and light and all this, then why are we seeing bitterness and hate all over the world? And these are the things that the actual extraterrestrials want no part of. So this does lead me to wonder, are these genetic experiments, are they extraterrestrial? Are they demonic? You tell me in the comments, what do you think? Oh, you see, now this is very touching. These videos are for entertainment purposes. But somehow across, we come across some one or two that we can relate with. And now this issue about love not being there and love deteriorating, you see, that's not a good thing. And it's why we are here, because we want to spread this message of love, peace and forgiveness to the world. Please you guys do that, share love out there to those around you, to everyone.
don't despise people for color or how they look. Please serve everybody. Don't even look at their religion. Love should be unconditional. Much love to you for watching up to this far. You are a beautiful and wonderful soul. Respect to yourself. Watch till the end. I tell us where you're watching from. You are loved. Let's keep watching. This man grills a 32nd degree Freemason asking him who his supreme authority is. There's no way you believe in fraternity over truth. As no, a that's Christian... Why I, that's why I joined, to, to get the truth. Because everyone... Do you think you found it? <sighs> that's a no. I, no. That's a no. That's a no. <laughs> you went through 32 degrees, there. you haven't found anything? Bro, I'm telling you, 32 degrees is not as impressive as But, but on the saying. 30th, 31st, 32nd, 33rd, you guys adhere to a supreme authority named Lucifer on page 321 of Morals and Dogma. Admit it. They, they definitely... Who's they? You of, mean you guys? Yeah. You, so is Lucifer your supreme authority and you call Jesus Adonai your second in command? No. Or no, you guys see it as a dualistic standing on your square, black and white, yin and yang. Adonai and Lucifer. Is Lucifer your supreme well, authority? He's real you. Yeah, no, not me. No? Not me. So Albert Pike was lying? Your supreme authority was lying? Albert Pike. Well, Albert Pike's not supreme authority. He's the Pope of Masonry. Bro, yeah. Who are we going to go by? We're going to go by Shaq, the Freemason? Are you going to... Oh my god! A man had strapped a GoPro camera to his dog, which then allegedly filmed a sighting of Bigfoot in the woods. The video simply shows the dog walking through the grassy woods when a figure suddenly runs by. The creature stands up on two legs like a human would but also appears hairy and ape-like. Oh, and a man had strapped a GoPro camera to his dog, which then allegedly filmed a sighting of Bigfoot in the woods. The video simply shows the dog walking through the grassy woods when a figure suddenly runs by. The creature stands up on two legs like a human would, but also appears hairy and ape-like. Just looking at me. Wow, I just heard a knock. I'm ho I hope the camera picked it up. Look at that face, guys. You think that's, that's not a face carved into the stone? Did that have happened from erosion or was that something else that's washed away? Guys, that's a face. Tell me there's not a face carved into that rock. Look at that. That's unbelievable. Wow. I'm sitting here, I'm walking, I'm watching everything, and look at that. It looks like a face to me. Look at that, guys. Come on. Wow. <sighs> wow, wow, wow. That looks... Yo, what is that? You ever go in to pet your dog or another, and they immediately start mouthing your hand, such as Daisy is doing here? Mouthing can be a super common puppy and young dog behavior. It can be a sign that the dog sees hands as something to play with, or it can also be a sign that the dog is feeling a little overstimulated or utilizing that mouthing as a communication tool. That's exactly what Daisy is doing here. Watch how Daisy is staring at my friend's hand as she brings it towards her. She's very still, her ears are perked forward, and as soon as the hand goes in, she immediately goes in to mouth it. My friend then removes her hand and attempts to bring it back to pet Daisy once again. And what does Daisy do? Give her a small whale eye and then immediately go back to grabbing the hand. When she does tolerate the pets for a second right here, notice how she does several lip licks. And then she also gives those really heavy blinks, which you can see right here. 
These are appeasement signals. When my friend is petting her, it also looks like Daisy starts to lean her head into the pets, but the fact that she starts mouthing directly after it shows us that she was actually trying to push my friend's hand away. So all of this combined can tell us that she's likely using the mouthing as a way to say, hey, don't really want to be touched right now, don't really want to be pet. And perhaps she'd either like to be left alone or have a different type of interaction. Huh, that's really interesting, man. Lord, Three, Jimmy. two, one, go. Jimmy Dorian from Alba. Easy, man. Lord, Jimmy. Nice and smooth, Jimmy. That's it. Come on, Jimmy. Come on, Jimmy. Keep it going, man. Come on, Jimmy. Come on, Jimmy. Come on, Jimmy. Come on, squeeze. Come on, nice, Jimmy. Nice, Jimmy. Come on, 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 Jimmy. Let's go, mate. Come on. There's nothing angry with that. Stop shouting under, Jimmy. Come on. Come on, Jimmy. Come on, Jimmy. Come on, Jimmy. Come on, Jimmy. Bump in the bicep. <laughs> Come on, Jimmy! I really wonder. <laughs> Come on, man. Come on, Jimmy. Big Come on, Jimmy. 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 You see the scaregrams? In the old days, before everything was made out of stones, as you can see right there, that structure was melted down. So when they took out the arteria, everything was melted. You can see right there, look. All of that was down. Melted. This whole thing right here was a huge structure castle made out of stone. They took that out of all, all of our race. You know, so now we're stuck in a reality. Look, you can see some of the tunneling system in between right there. Glad to have Linda this morning finally say that there are live ETs on Earth at this present time, and um, at least two of them probably working with the United States government. Our investigation was launched into this whole subject, and uh, a document was prepared which uh, concluded that at least four species had been visiting Earth for thousands of years. And this is my own uh, view at this stage as well. The survival plan for the human species as an aid memoir and uh, I name five different uh, species here. I'm aware of uh, more now as a matter of fact, I saw a document uh, just a few days ago that mentioned 20. Uh, and I think you, Mr. Chairman, were interested in some of the places they might come from. And I have in here Zeta Reticula, R-E-T-I-C-U-L-I, -E Reticuli, the Pleiades, Orion, and Romita, and the Altair star systems. So uh, I don't think we can any more refer them to them as they because they're not an amorphous mass. They are different species and consequently may have different agendas. I don't think we can say that they all have the ag same agenda any more than we could say that the United States, uh, China, and, uh, and Russia have the same agenda. Our real interests may be very similar, 
but as of now our perceived interests are still uh, quite far apart. I, the seventh, the other species that I learned about uh, not too long ago was called the tall whites. And uh, this is when Paula Harris uh, broke the story just a few years ago. And through her good offices, I had the chance to talk for about three hours with former airman Charles Hall and uh, listen to this absolutely fascinating story of uh, how he was working with, first of all, he was scared out of his skin, but after that, when he got to know them, how he was working with, and finally, they became to trust each other and have a good working relationship with the tall whites at the uh, gunnery range at Indian Springs in Nevada. And these tall whites were living on United States Air Force property and working in cooperation with the United States Air Force and sharing technology.